Hey guys, I'm Alexandra and welcome to season three of my rental reno. I've moved out of the treehouse and into my brand new two bedroom home. I'm gonna be making over this space start to finish, room by room. I'm so excited. Am my camera ready? Hi neighbor, don't worry. <laughs> new selfie spot. Cute. This has been a steep learning curve for me. Alexandra, you're failing. Let's get started. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. We're almost at 400,000. Please hit that subscribe button and join our family. Today's video is so, so exciting. I am making over my entire kitchen from start to finish. If you have landed on this video because you love kitchen makeovers, I actually have a whole playlist dedicated to all sorts of kitchens, renter kitchens with renter friendly changes, and then more like involved kitchen renos like this one. Buckle up, this is gonna be, it's gonna be a hefty makeover. That was my like, buckle up. But I don't know why I did this. It should be like, buckle up. So a little context. Noah and I, my partner, just moved into this home four months ago. We have a whole series dedicated to making over this home room by room. And the kitchen was something that I was like, I can't even think about tackling that until like 20, 20, 60 or something. I had spoken to the landlord before we even signed the lease and I had said like, would you be open to us doing a brand new DIY style kitchen? And our landlord is the best, shout out to Brian and Tyler. I just think of them as one. I think of them as bri -tie. So this is what the kitchen looks like now. I did a whole video where I walked through my plan for the space. If you missed that video, I will link it up here. We have white cabinets mixed with this darker wood tone of cabinet, this beautiful countertop, it's Caesar stone. We have this island, which was was left to us by the previous owners. We're keeping this, we love it. And then these stools, which Noah picked, they're very modern, but this is the before. This is what we're working with. So my parents are actually coming in from England. My dad is so handy. I've enlisted him to help me with this kitchen makeover. Although I do a lot of renter friendly makeovers, I wanted to branch out. And since I had my dad as like my right hand man for this makeover, I wanted to push myself and the design and really see what we could accomplish just us two. So this makeover is for all of those people watching who can make more permanent changes to their homes. Maybe you don't have a large budget to spend. A lot of kitchen makeovers are like $40,000. We're working with what we have and spending less than $5,000 for this whole space, which if you own your home or have done a kitchen reno, you know is a pretty tight budget to be working with. Super quickly, the major changes we are making, we are painting all of the cabinets and drawers a new color. We're painting over this wood. We're painting over the white. We are backsplashing this entire wall. We are blowing out the cabinets and we're doing open shelving. I'm also gonna be painting this bench, reupholstering the cushion. We're gonna make that look super pretty. I'm also gonna be changing the pantry door to something farmhouse, kind of rustic. So now you have a kind of brief overview of what we're gonna be doing. Let's head into day one. Alana and I are heading out to a place called The Door Store. They sell exactly what their name implies. They just sell doors. I really want something that's like vintage and has some sort of like glass panes or something. I looked a lot on Facebook Marketplace yesterday and I couldn't really find anything that was like perfect. So I actually texted Danny Berger. I'm like, I'm going to a place that I feel like you would love. Like I feel like Danny would just love going to The Door Store. See when we reach The Door Store. <laughs> I feel like the door store only is doing pickup and deliveries right now. And if that's the case, I'm gonna be really sad. This video is just like mostly me in the car. So I didn't film because I wasn't allowed to go in the store, which is kind of a bummer, but I but I understand it was um, curbside pickup only. He was very helpful in like looking for doors that would work, but didn't find any that I liked. One thing that he did tell me that was super helpful is that I can't do two doors. He's like, I've been doing this for 30 years. I know my doors and the size you need for each, which is 16 inches wide. He's like, you just won't find a door that size unless you want to like build a custom door. So then I just did a quick search and I found this door on Facebook marketplace for $135. And the ones at the door store were like 500 and up because they're old antique doors, but I'm thinking I could do 
a DIY to frost the glass because we really don't want to see into the pantry. I just messaged her. She replied right away, which like we love when someone on Facebook Marketplace replies right away. And we're gonna go see it in the next hour. This is basically our day today. Me and Alana just like solving problems like that. No door, no problem. Update, the door has been secured. When my dad comes, we're gonna try and figure out how to like mount it, if it's even gonna work, if it looks good in the space. But I think just having it is good. And it's just too big. Really beautiful, but it's just not gonna fit. We were maybe gonna do some sort of like barn door solution, but that's not gonna work because we don't have enough space on either side. So basically I've listed this one on Facebook Marketplace to resell it. My parents are currently on a plane up in the air. Whee! They'll be here soon, so I'll see you guys on day one. <laughs> oh, my hair looks <laughs> It looks great. <laughs> what are we gonna do? No, Just wave. Tell me when. Now. Okay. <laughs> do, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> You're blocking his face. It is day one of the kitchen reno. I can't believe this day is here. It feels like yesterday I was telling Noah that we weren't gonna make over the kitchen for a very long time. So we are gonna start by taking all of the cabinet fronts off the doors. We're going to be taking everything out of the cabinets that are coming off the wall. We're gonna take you through the day. We've taken everything out of the cupboards. My mom is in charge of rearranging everything so our house doesn't look like a disaster. These are Ikea cabinets. They're really easy to take off the wall. They're just like hanging on the wall. Let's do it. Dad, you're very on brand with the overalls. Because I thought you were gonna wear yours. I know, I sh really should have today. If you are gonna do something like this at home and you don't wanna take the actual cabinet boxes down, you don't have to. I think it would actually look really great if you just left it open without doors. You'd have to patch the holes on the side, but this could be like a bit of a hack for you if you don't wanna do a full reno. I think just taking the doors off could make such a big impact. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Great. Well done, darling. <laughs> That's really good. Nice. That is really good. I think that now it's going to open up all the way. Oh my god. Is that good? Okay. Now what we're doing is we're taking off all the doors. This is a pretty important step. So we're labeling the doors with painter's tape and we're also labeling the inside of the cabinet with the same number. So that way after they all get sprayed, we know exactly where they go back on. And then for the bench and all the trim pieces, we are going to hand paint those to match the cabinets. We're taking these pieces off so we don't need to paint those. We're just gonna toss those. Our landlords, are actually outfitting their basement unit. They're redoing their basement unit. So they're gonna use the cabinets down there. And of course, we're not getting rid of these. We're not replacing them. We're reusing them and we're just painting them, which is a really, not only cost-effective way to update your kitchen, but it's also a sustainable one too. I did want to mention that if your cabinets are unsalvageable, sometimes cabinet fronts are just old and they need to be replaced. There are tons of companies that sell custom IKEA cabinet fronts. So if your IKEA cabinet boxes are in like mint condition, but it's just the doors that have a lot of wear and tear, you can just order brand new cabinet fronts, click them in, easy peasy. And that is a great way to not spend your budget on like an entire new IKEA kitchen. Instead, just focusing on the door fronts. Make sure you also keep the hardware in little sandwich bags and number those as well, or else when you start to put your cabinet doors back on and your drawers, you're gonna be like, I don't know what hardware to use. So don't miss that step. And MD, any thoughts? Progress. So much progress. progress. Okay, so we've taken off all the cabinet doors, all the drawers, 
And by we, I, I yeah, haven't really helped. No. <laughs> For some of the drawers, we're using different cabinet hardware. So before these get sprayed, we're gonna fill these holes with wood filler, let it dry, sand it, and then it'll just be like a smooth paint process. This is the part where you wanna make sure you're filling any like nicks in your cabinet doors, any tiny holes, like just wear and tear. That way, when they're painted, they'll look brand new. We're, we're way ahead, sweetie. We are heading now to Manual Arts, and Manual Arts is basically a team of really skilled contractors, but I would also say they're like kind of artists, like they're all really creative, and we've decided we're gonna have them spray the cabinet doors on the back and the front. When I did Christy's Kitchen, if you guys haven't seen that video, I'll link it up here. That was like a very, let's get this kitchen done all by hand, do it all ourselves. It turned out amazing. Christy loves it. It's holding up super great. But we learned a lot of lessons. One being that painting cabinets is no joke. You have to prime each side, then you have to do two coats of paint, but you have to let the first side dry and then flip it over and like do, do it all over again. I am still unsure how we pulled that makeover off in three days. For my kitchen, I've decided that I'm going to give the cabinet fronts to Manual Arts. They have an industrial sprayer and they have like a spraying booth and a drying rack. It's just gonna be so much more efficient and just like way better than trying to prime and paint by hand. I also have zero space to do that. So we're heading there now. Last stop of the day, we're going to Lowe's to look for open shelving. You mean lumber? Lumber. We're looking for lumber. I've got Lowe's. I've got Lowe's. That's actually really funny. I'm not going to not be able to say that. I've got Lowe's. I've got Lowe's. <laughs> that was good, right? <laughs> that wasn't bad. I've got Lowe's. <laughs> Okay, not as good. My dad has come up with this whole idea of how to make these shelves floating. At first we were gonna have them custom made. That was gonna cost over like $200 plus a shelf. My dad was like, no, we can do it for cheaper. He has this whole method planned out. So that's what we're shopping for now. Here we have the influencer. Oh yeah. Okay. Some good zooming in and zooming out. Where are your uh, overalls? So these are all the different stains. I usually use English chestnut, but that's pretty dark. Golden oak is nice. Early American is nice too. I'm also grabbing some stain and some wood conditioner. Tip, do not leave the hardware store without wood conditioner if you are staining shelves. More about that later, but just trust me buy the wood conditioner. We also found a light. I'm gonna buy it and try it and see if it works, but I like how it has the gold. Yeah. What I thought it was gonna be like a uh, 45 minute adventure. Joy ride. It's turned into three hours. Does not seem like a good idea for your camera, but why are we doing this? There's some B-roll. Look at Jem and her cute little shorts. Oh, are you filming me? Yeah, smoke show is what I say to that. Finally, it's dark out, but we are heading home. I'm actually on set shooting two other makeovers this week, which I realize is not ideal, but that is the life of a YouTuber. I feel like a lot of people think, I don't know what you guys think I do. I've been so busy today. <laughs> Let me tell you, sometimes I'm shooting two to three makeovers a week. This was one of those weeks. My parents are in the kitchen and they are just getting things prepped for Friday because Friday we're gonna tackle a whole bunch of stuff together. My mom is sanding the bench down. She's also priming it to get ready to have it painted. My dad is working on those floating shelves. And my sister, Olivia, well, she's just being Olivia. Okay, editor's note, don't include that. Hi friends, it is Friday. What a crazy week. So I ended up selling the door that you guys saw, the last door you saw on Facebook Marketplace. I'm so glad I did because I had a vision of like a door with an arch in it. I didn't really know how that was gonna work, but yesterday I found this door. It's upside down, but 
I found this door on Facebook Marketplace for $100 and it's just absolutely stunning. It's like solid wood, glass with this beautiful design in it. Look at the hardware. It's just so good. You're saying to me, should we cut, should we cut? I yeah. said, wait, you're gonna find it. It's gonna come to you. I think you manifested it, my dumb. I said, that's what I said on the call with Noah. I was like, I think I manifested this door. Today, I'm going to finish staining and sealing the floating shelves. My dad and I are gonna put those up. We're gonna get the door on the hinges. I think we're gonna change the light. We're just gonna get as much done as possible. Doors off. Okay, Dad, let's bring the other one in. <laughs> no way! <gasps> it's so beautiful! <laughs> oh my god! 32 by 79, exactly the size I needed. Mom, come look at it. It was made oh, for the space. <laughs> my goodness. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, I can't believe how it fits. We needed to trim the door down just a bit on the bottom, but it is installed now and it looks absolutely beautiful. Oh my God. <laughs> we have a door. Round of applause for the manifested door. I'm like doing a delicate fairy clap and you're like, now that the door's up, we're going to switch out this overhead light. Bought this light for $100 at Lowe's. I've got love. So it's metal, and then on the inside it has this beautiful gold finish. But I feel like I might put it up and like not like it. <laughs> this makeover is turning out to be like extremely farmhousey, and I'm not mad about it, to be honest. Last minute change. I should have shown you guys what the black light looked like, but it's not right. It really darkens the whole space, and I think with the door, we want some elements of like light and airiness in here. So, the good old bird light that is, you know, very divided in terms of people that love it and hate it, is going up in the kitchen. I've seen this light in so many kitchens before. It was recently in House and Home. I'll pop that image up here. And it's just gonna help like balance out all the farmhousey rustic accents we have going on in here. It's hung. I'm going to swag it on a hook so that it hangs centered over the island. Say what you wanna say about this light. I know it's made a lot of appearances on my channel. Noah and I love it. That's all that matters. It's so good. Now it's time to spray this bench. I bought this sprayer for under $100. I'm gonna link it down below along with all of the products that are in this kitchen, but I really love it. I was really nervous about using a sprayer for the first time. This is perfect for small jobs. I'm sure it could do like a whole room, like walls of a room, but for this small job, we needed something that was compact and just like easy to use and this is it. It took me about five minutes to spray the bench. It was so smooth, the coverage was amazing. We just highly recommend. I'm slowly adding tools to my kit and this is one that I think I'll be using for a long time. I'm also painting the trim of the cabinets that we couldn't actually bring to manual arts because they're literally, you know, installed on the wall. So just getting into all those nooks and crannies and painting this whole space this green color. Now it's time to work on those floating shelves. So the first thing I'm doing is wood conditioning them. If I'm honest, whenever I've stained wood in the past, I haven't wood conditioned it. I don't know what I was doing. Wood conditioner makes the wood so smooth and when you stain it, it doesn't go on blotchy at all. I just felt it was like a really great experience when it came to staining. It was so easy. It took my mom and I like maybe 15 minutes. We only did one coat, but they look so rich and beautiful. We also sealed these shelves with a shellac just to make sure that we could wipe them down and clean them and that they were protected. This is the color. I love it. It's like a honey color. And it's called Golden Oak. 
I'm gonna explain the method that my dad came up with for these floating shelves because it is a really easy DIY that you guys can tackle at home. The first thing we did was we took our board that was cut to size and we sliced the back off. I know that might sound weird, but we basically created a bracket out of the shelf that we were hanging on the wall. I'm gonna call this piece like the bracket of the shelf. So we drilled holes in it to fit dowels through. We just used wood glue. I stuck the wood glue in the holes. You're probably like, I don't understand where this is going, but stay with me, it's brilliant. So then we drilled the bracket into the wall, into the studs, so we knew it was nice and secure. That is solid. Okay. I could like hang off of this. <laughs> no, seriously. I know you can. And then we took the other side of the shelf and these holes are gonna fit into the dowels that are on the wall on our bracket. It is taking everything in me not to style these shelves right now. Well, there's only one, but they look so good. If you guys are wondering if you can see the seam where the shelf was cut, you cannot. It's so seamless. It just like fits together just like this. And now we have a floating shelf. Okay, the third shelf is going up and it makes the ceilings look so tall. I my hand. Whoa! Speak my, hand. my dad and I were like a little bit worried that they were gonna tilt or the dowels weren't gonna be strong enough, but it worked. We did use a couple of shims just to make sure they were completely level. And trust me when I say they're so secure and sturdy on the wall. Such an easy DIY that any of you guys could do at home. It's 9 p.m. It's been a big day. The last shelf. Keep going. Nice! You guys, my dad like literally designed these. NMD, is it approved? Yep. Body, is it approved? You're very tired, body. Okay. Good night, guys. See you on Monday. It's Monday. Let's head to Manual Arts and get these cabinets painted. from painting the cabinet fronts. That was so fun that I got to spray them. Now what I'm gonna do is take down the curtain or it's a blind that's already here. This window, we have never closed the blind, like not once. There's a huge tree that blocks the view and it's just nice to have the light coming in. But I knew I wanted to change it because I don't really like the style. This is kind of like a bamboo shade. So instead I found this curtain from Etsy. It's made out of linen and it has these really beautiful long ties. I'm just taking down this blind and I'm simply using a tension rod to hang this super renter friendly. I don't need it to be super sturdy because I'm not rolling it up and down. It's really just here for decoration. Woohoo! The tiles arrived. These boxes were a hundred pounds each. That's not true. These boxes were 60 pounds each. There's 10 boxes. Noah and I were like carrying them up the stairs going <gasps> like that. Severely out of breath because <laughs> we've been carrying the tiles up, but they arrived. They're so beautiful, you guys. They're irregular, organic looking. I can't wait. Gabe is here. He's our awesome tiler. He does lots of tile work in the city of Toronto. If you guys are looking for a tiler who like knows what he's doing, gets the job done. I'm gonna link his Instagram down below. I chose these beautiful Moroccan tiles from the Riyadh tile. If you are looking for floor tile, backsplash tile, like anything super ornate and beautiful, make sure to check them out. Their stuff is incredible. So you can see like some of them dip and jut out and then other ones like are a little bit curved at the top, but this is all getting grouted with white, which will really like finish it off. Gage is probably like, why is she not working? <laughs> I'm working, I'm working. It was so fun seeing these tiles up on the wall. They're exactly what I pictured they would be. I think they're just such a 
fun twist on the classic subway tile. If we ever decide to move out of this apartment, I don't think that's gonna happen because we wanna stay here forever. The landlords can change the color of the cabinets if they want and this backsplash will still look classic and timeless, I think, for years to come. This is gonna be my face for the next two hours. Fun fact, some tiles can be tiled over, but make sure you check with someone experienced with tiling work before you do this. Woo! Last few tiles going in. It's like a little cake. You're icing a cake. Nice, nice. We decided not to tile completely up the wall for a couple of reasons. One, where the ceiling meets the wall is super bowed, so you would very much be able to tell that the tile was just like super wonky. Also, the tile stops perfectly right at the top of the window frame, and it leaves this really nice white line that's consistent throughout the whole kitchen. I love how that white space lets it breathe a little bit and makes it feel balanced with the rest of the kitchen. We got our cabinet fronts back. They look amazing. They look like brand new cabinets. So Noah and I are going to hang some of those up now. Remember when my dad and I labeled all of these and then we labeled inside the cabinet? This is where this comes in handy because the painter has written the number inside the cabinet hole there. So we know exactly which cabinets go where. So do your prep work, people. Do your prep work. You know, we have to find cabinet 12. Yeah. Lock it. This is looking so good. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Did I read the numbers? Time has come for hardware. These you may remember from my old kitchen, the treehouse kitchen, and then these I found on Etsy. I saw some similar to these on the CB2 website, but they were like $20 a knob. These were $4 a knob. I will link these down below. So these are gonna go on the drawers, and then these are gonna go on the cabinets. So the first thing we did was my dad held up the knob, and I just kind of told him by eye where I wanted it. We found the spot and then we've taken a piece of cardboard and measured the exact distance here and down here. Measured that out on this piece of cardboard and then drilled a hole through the cardboard. Ignore the cross, we're just focusing on this. You want to line it up to the bottom of your cabinet side as well. And then you're gonna take a pen, marker, whatever, pencil, and just fill in where you need to drill the hole. Like that. Flip your template over, do the same thing, line it up to the bottom, make sure it's on the side, and then mark your hole. Slowly, let the fill do the work. Screw. <laughs> That's better, my darling. Yeah! They look fancy. For the glass of the door, I bought this static cling glass film. So it's not even peel and stick, it just clings to water. I'll show you how I'm gonna install it. I personally love just the glass and being able to see through, but the reality is, is that this is our pantry slash utility cupboard and I just don't want the pressure of keeping it neat and tidy all the time. So I'm gonna see how this looks. It was under $30 from Amazon, so if I hate it, I can just take it off, give it a go. Okay, that was a bit finicky to get on, but I love it. I actually really think it works. I was really worried about it completely altering the door, but I think it works.
I've been holding onto the squiggle hook for a while and sometimes it's the smallest details like this that really make a space come to life. Wow, she cute. She real cute. Noah hasn't seen the tile with the grout on it and it looks incredible and I want him to see it. Really? It's great. <laughs> that's, it? Not, that's it? <gasps> that's it? Like, that's your reaction? That no, that's fake. No. <laughs> so you probably made it to minute like 20 something. For us it's been like 2 million hours, but I think we're finally done. Wonderful. Any thoughts? Any final thoughts? Oh, so much fun and thank you so much <laughs> for asking me to help. News? Looks great. Jemmy? Amazing. Next time I see you guys, I'll be with Carla doing the finishing touches, styling the space, and then you get to see the before and afters. You guys, like my parents are flying back to England and I'm feeling like bittersweet about it. We finished this space on Friday. It was honestly just so nice to connect with my dad and work on this project together. It's now time for those finishing touches. And these finishing touches are really the things that bring life into a space. I'm adding a table lamp into the corner of this counter. Now, I feel like this is gonna be one of those things where you guys are like, a table lamp, what? but it adds so much glow and ambiance and coziness to our kitchen at night. Our landlord, Brian, said that it was very New York, and I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm adding this beautiful runner rug by the sink. I love how the purple and green just go so well together. We got these cushion covers reupholstered in this kind of prairie checkered pattern, which kind of unexpected for me, but I think it really works. And then of course, adding in all those tiny details, these pom-pom dish towels from Hallie Hallie Designs, who has the most amazing dishcloths, dish towels, anything kitchen, you name it. Again, like little details like this that make such an impact are so special in a space. Are you guys ready to see what this kitchen looks like? Let's take a look at what it looked like before. We had that classic renter backsplash. Our cabinets were wood and white, filling the space above the sink. Okay, this is what the kitchen looks like now. Thank you to my mom and my dad for helping so much. Couldn't have done it without you both. Thanks to Olivia, my sister, for filming some of the clips. And thank you to you for watching every Saturday, for tuning in and making it possible for me to do this as a living. I'm so thankful. As always, I will see you guys next Saturday. Bye.
as Kelly. 